What's up all you Mintees? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition and join me today for my haul of May of 2021. So we're looking at absolute editions, hardcovers, and trade paperbacks, and then some really amazing rare items that some of you all sent me. So please stay tuned. And welcome back everybody. Before getting started, don't forget to hit that like button and ring that bell for notifications. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. We put out videos every day. I got quite a bit to go through here, and we're gonna start it off with some of these trade paperbacks I got in that I'm very excited to talk about. Kicking off the list is a book I'm very excited about, and that is Batman The Dark Knight Detective Volume 5. Here is uh, the back, oh, I thought that was Second Chances that they were advertising back there, but it is Cape Crusader. It's really, oh, Thought that was a really weird move uh, because second chances has been out of print for a long time as well as some of these cape crusaders and dark knight detective books they've been out of print for a little bit so this collects the detective comics 612 to 621 skipping issue 615 which was in uh, pr a previous collection and these are the stories by alan grant and norm brayfogle so this is detective comics while cape crusader collects the batman and I'm surprised they let a lot of those go out of print because this, as far as I know, or as far as DC is aware, is the only way to collect the post-crisis on Infinite Earths Batman. So it was the relaunch with year one. These are the stories that happen afterwards. And they've let a lot of those go out of print, a lot of the earlier volumes of Cape Crusader and Dark Knight Detective. So hopefully one day they will reprint them. This also collects annual number three, by the way. Damn, do I love Norm Brayfogle's art during this era. And, of course, Alan Grant. Phenomenal. Both of them working together. Oh, man. There's the Robin case after a certain Robin passed away. And if I'm not mistaken, this is also the beginning of the Tim Drake story arc. Yeah. When Tim Drake eventually officially becomes the new robin so all those stories are found through these pages Let's skip a little bit in case you haven't read those but this is what the artwork looks like maybe i'll do an overview of these um all of these once uh the future volumes are out because eventually these are all going to take us to nightfall and i hope to do the right thing and it <laughs> collect the Sword of Azrael in one of these trade paperbacks. Or just make Omnis out of these. So this is my first shout out to Sonny who sent me this all the way from across the pond. This isn't the only thing that he sent me that is so cool. Uh, but this is signed by Alan Grant and Norm Brayfogle. So that was really sweet. Which is the, the, the same people that did this. So this was collected in a previous collection. This is issue 610 and it's one of my favorite Detective Comics covers. The next book I have is The Batman's Grave, The Complete Collection, by Brian Hitch, Warren Ellis, and Kevin Nolan, providing the artwork. Alex and Claire providing the colors. So I think these stories were originally released digitally, is what um, some of you all have told me. I've not read this, and this is the first time I'm opening it up, honestly. I just got it in the mail the other day. Uh, but the artwork looks gorgeous. I kind of wish this had been a deluxe edition instead of a standard size hardcover. Uh, but, you know, I, got, I guess at least it's it, it came out in physical format. Now, since I've not read this, I'm not sure if this is in continuity. It doesn't say black label anywhere or anything. So I'm assuming it is. This one retails for $39.99, which is why I thought this was going to be released in deluxe edition. But, man, the artwork, Hitch knows how to deliver, that's for sure. Now, I also picked up these two standard size hardcovers, which you've seen overviews of on the channel. I'll leave a link above in case you haven't, but I did an overview of both of these at the same time. The Death of Iris West and The Man of Steel Volume 3. A lot of people have reached out to me about Volume 4. They seem to not be able to pre-order it, but it's still in the catalog, so it's not canceled. And Amazon's still showing a normal date instead of the year 2079, which makes me think that they're just going to resolicit, or not resolicit it, but the pre-order will be up next month instead of this month. Twice a year I get excited about these Duck comics. I, uh, there's a Donald Duck and an Uncle Scrooge comic that comes out twice a year from Fanagraphics. This is collecting the classic Carl Bark stories. And one thing to note is that 
on the very front, they stop telling you uh, the rest of the books in what order they come in. But this is volume 24. I'm sorry. They do tell you what volume it is, but they don't tell you the other volumes of uh, that are collected of the Fantagraphics books. So I think they move that over to another page because I'm sure they want you to buy other Karl Barks collections. But this again, uh, volume 24, so the later years of Karl Barks, but we are already introduced to the character of Scrooge McDuck, one of the greatest comic book characters in history. And there's Gyro. So yes, so for the people that are wondering, he did create Gyro, he did not create Launchpad, McQuack, or uh, Gizmo Duck. That was all from DuckTales. And Don Rosa only acknowledges the characters that Carl Barks created. And that's it. He didn't acknowledge anything that DuckTales did. So if you're wondering why Launchpad or Gizmo Duck are not in here, that's why. Now let me see if in the back, yeah, I love when they add these things back here. Sort of behind the scenes or just Easter eggs that you may not have noticed. What? Oh man, that's awesome. Original artwork and of course the bio of Carl Barks. He lived a long time, honestly. And this is where these uh, duck stories first appear. This is usually left for the last page, which makes me think, yep, okay. So what they did is they added this, which used to be in the very front to the very back. So from each volume five, we have all the way uninterrupted all the way to 24. So that's awesome. We need the first four volumes. And I want to say there's probably six more collections of these um, after 24. So maybe taking us all the way to 30. And then that's it. Now, so if let me know in the comments if you're picking these up in this format or if you're picking them up in the box set format. Which, if I had known that we're going to do box sets, I probably would have waited a little bit longer to get these. I ended up picking up the three latest TKO books, and latest for me, I've not read these yet. I know these came out sometime in October of last year, but they are new to me. I love this line, TKO does amazing things. They release the books same day in graphic novel format, in single issue format, and in digital format. Uh, the single issues come in a box set, and uh, the graphic novels come like this. I think they're going to start releasing some hardcovers is what the rumor has been. But uh, this one's written by Steve Niles. So these are already people that have been uh, established writing comics. And Simon Kudransky does the artwork. Salvatore Simeon helps out Niles. And Niles has done a lot of horror books. I think he's the one that did uh, 30 Days a Night. And he also did, oh, what was that one underrated book for DC that he did? It was a character based out of Gotham. Oh, man. Solomon? No, 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 no. Ah, it's going to come to me after the video, I know. Uh, but Steve Niles is, is no stranger to the horror books. And I think that's what all of these are kind of horror-centric, if I'm not mistaken. Digging this artwork, though. And the TKO books are just a little bit taller than your trade paperbacks and just a little bit wider as well of course not as thick since they only well depending on the trade paperback right uh they only collect six issues usually and as i was saying these are horror centric or scary uh centric they vary though some of them have mature content some of them can be read by teenagers or older teens so since i've not read this i gotta be careful flipping through here because i don't know if any of this man the artwork is freaking badass on this though who is the artist ricardo lopez ortiz i know steve orlando is he's written for dc he's written for marvel but i'm not familiar with this artist that's it's got an anime feel to it and i love that well i guess it depends on the type of story Sometimes this type of artwork doesn't work with certain type of stories. Had to skip some pages. This one's definitely mature content. Just saying. And then we have Red Fork here. It's the another book by TKO. This one looks a little bit more gorier because I had to skip some pages. So yeah, I think probably all of these are mature content. I don't want to skip too much through here because I myself have not read them. And if you're not a fan of horror stuff then you may want to stay away from these three uh this is the third wave of tko books the first two waves i don't i think there's only been one horror book and one maybe slash scary book which is the sentient book but these are all horror centric it looks like and if you haven't checked out tko i 
definitely suggest checking them out. Their books can be bought at comic book stores. They did a wonderful thing last year uh, during the pandemic. They gave away just some of the money that they made. Uh, they, they gave away to certain comic book stores, like your local comic book stores. They donated money. I thought that was really cool. But that's TKO. They sell them through Amazon. They sell them through their own website or your local comic book shop. Gotta give a shout out to my buddy John Boy from Dying Breed Collectors. He he's an amazing dude. He owns he's starting his own uh, place where you can buy graphic novels. DyingBreedCollectors.com. He sells on eBay. Uh, but he sent me this, and this was a real class act. He sent me this book um, right after Miura died. He knows how much of a fan I am of Kentaro Miura. Uh, my wife and I did a video on here. Uh, to talk about just a little bit about how much he meant to us and how much the story of Berserk meant to us. And this was published by 3rd Edition Books. So this reads more like a journal or a... I don't want to say a behind the scenes. Uh, if it's anything like the Dragon Quest book that they sent me, it reads more like a journal entry, but getting deep into the psyche of the Berserk story. Now, it is just the prose. Is there's no pictures at all. I mean, other than the sword. Even the chapter breaks don't have pictures. So this is what the chapter breaks look like. So, if you're not a fan of words, this may not be for you. Just giving you a heads up what to expect when you're cracking this book open. Because it is sealed if you're ever looking at it at a comic book store and you're wondering what's in there. It, it's it's just a novel. I can't believe I have to warn people that it, it's, there are no pictures. But hey, you know, this is a graphic novel YouTube channel. So... I, I gotta do what I gotta do. Now, let's start the Kyle pile. My buddy Kyle sent me some uh, birthday gifts. My birthday was in March, but he was waiting on some things to come in. He got me the complete suicide risk. He knows how much of a fan I am of Mike Carey's writing. And this is Suicide Risk, published by Boom Comics. I can't wait to, this is everything. This is everything, all six volumes of this. It's not available in hardcover format. It's only available in trade paperback format. Boom seems to do that from time to time. Oh man, this artwork is awesome. Uh, so the artwork here is mainly supplies by Elena Casagrande. You also have artwork in here from Felipe Andrede. Uh, oh, Joel Jones does some of the art in here. So um, being that I've never read this, I don't know if this is mature content or who this is for, but I cannot wait to read this. The good thing I haven't uh, picked my top 10 favorite. Here, let's look at a future volume. This cover intrigues me, so I, I had to go with this one. So yes, I'm glad I haven't uh, chosen my top 10 favorite Boom comics because this may make it up there. I mean, this is Mike Carey, same guy that did X-Men Legacy. He also did, of course, Lucifer, had runs on Hellblazer. Uh, he did Unwritten, and I... Yeah, I can't uh, wait to read this stuff. And it's all finally collected, he said. All six volumes of this is only available in trade paperback. They haven't announced any hardcovers, but kind of gives me hope, you know, if uh, Once in Future sell or something is killing the children, those deluxe editions sell, they might put these all in hardcover format just to show um, the covers again. I have no idea what this is. And I love going into series not knowing exactly what I'm in store for. It's a great feeling. Okay, it's a great feeling unless it sucks, right? <laughs> then it's not such a great uh, feeling. So this is uh, the complete Duck Unknown, again, from the Kyle Pyle for my birthday. He sent me this. No idea what this is. Um, this is uh, from Dark Horse Comics. It's by Fabian Rangel and Ryan Cody, uh, who are the writers. And then the artists are Phil Sloan, Ryan Cody, and Jim McMunn, and John Broglia. So... The, apparently this is everything he did tell me that this is everything this is all i need um i'm not sure if they've done any more duck unknowns but digging this artwork has a mignola feel to it simple yet complex i dig it i like the frame layout and i love love these colors yeah that's awesome so i've not read this so please in the comments down below let me know what i'm in store for in case you've read this before being that this is my first time um, looking at this. I remember when this came out, this is the Joe Hill graphic novel collection from IDW. It's in hardcover format and it collects the stuff that is not lock and key. So it's his short stories or his graphic novels that came out. And I've read a couple of these. And of course, Joe Hill does horror centric stories. Um, but I remember there was one in here that I read. I'm loving this artwork here. 
I've not read the cape. That looks great. They all have different types of artwork. Uh, this is the one I remember reading, Thumbprint. And this one read more like a crime noir book than a horror story. So, maybe they're not all horror-centric. I love the artwork in here. Let me see what the last uh, book looks like, the artwork. <laughs> okay, that one definitely has some horror vibes going there. And then this is what one of the other stories looks like in here. Alright, let's keep going. And I remember him and I talking about these two books right here. Remind by Jason uh, Brubaker. These were Kickstarters. And he remembered our conversation because we were both looking at this. And I was like, man, I've never heard of that. And he was like, oh, okay. And he ended up buying them for me. I, and, and he was like, yeah, man, of course I remembered our conversation. Yeah, Kyle's good people, man. But he sent me this as well. This was uh, this was for my birthday. No idea what this was, but I tell you what though, I based it all on that cover. I love that cover, and it reminded me of Joshua Middleton. That's why I was like, well, let's check it out. I've not read this at all. No idea what it's about. It was a Kickstarter. Both of these volumes, Remind, and I don't know if there's gonna be any more. Let me flip through here so you can see some of the artwork. But that cover to Volume 1 reminded me of Joshua Middleton. And then I saw some of the internal artwork too. And I was like, okay, this looks indie enough. I'm digging the vibes that I'm getting from some of these panels. Is this all about the cat? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, but no idea what these are about. But they're both beautiful hardcovers from Coffee Table Comics. And let's go back and look at yeah this volume right here separated into uh, different chapters so maybe the cat is one of the main characters of the book all right so here's one he sent me this is uh brandon sanderson so that's a name i'm sure a lot of people are familiar with uh, but this is from vault comics it's in hardcover so i don't know if they were doing any hardcovers um yet but it is uh, adapted by Jackson Lansing and Colin Kelly and drawn by Nathan Gooden. But it is a story by Brandon Sanderson. So, uh, Mistborn. Or the guy that finished the Wheel of Time series. So, I assume it's fantasy based. And I'm not sure where the story originally appeared. But, I dig in this art though. I like the facial expressions. And the colors are nice. Wait a minute. Okay, so it looks like this might be fantasy slash... Hmm. Alright, I'm intrigued. As soon as I saw this, I was like, wait a minute. I just saw a bunch of creatures uh, fighting with swords and stuff. What's going on? Is it a game? Huh. Okay, I'm in. I don't know what this is about. And it doesn't... Oh, it does say book one. So there might be more of these. Huh. From Bolt Comics. And to wrap up the Kyle pile, he also got me the Absolute Identity Crisis. Uh, he knows how much of a fan I am of big, oversized art books. He understands my issues with the, 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 the story, but he knows that I'm also a collector and love oversized art. So this is the Controversial, and we've done uh, Old Reader, New Reader on this, if you want to see my feelings on that. Click on the link above. Oh my gosh, was that three years ago when we did it or two years ago? It's been a while ago. But anyway, this is the Controversial Identity Crisis by Brad Meltzer and Rags Morales. So that's what this is. And a lot of people suggest reading this before reading Infinite Crisis because some of the things that happen here lead into Infinite Crisis. I myself think you don't have to unless you want to, but... I mean, it, it doesn't hurt. It does add to the how dark was the DC universe and why certain characters in Infinite Crisis were thinking the way that they were thinking. I will say that without spoiling anything. I don't know. If th Let me see the back here. So the back looks like we have a little behind the scenes as to what scenes were really hard to write for the writer and what scenes were difficult to draw for the artist. And where the original ideas came from. Let me see. Okay, there we go. There's the variant cover gallery by Michael Turner. Rest in peace. That guy went way too... I think he was 28? My God. And I think he passed away. Yeah, he passed away. I was in Japan when he passed away. That was in 2008. Man. 
Uh, so if you were expecting the little Street Fighter thing, I'm sorry. Uh, I did rem <laughs> I said Japan, but I, uh, you know, just kind of felt weird to do it when I'm talking about the death of somebody so young. All right, let's keep going. Oh, it does have a dust jacket. Okay. Sometimes they do dust jackets on these. Sometimes they don't. Now, if you've seen the what's in the box that I did with my daughters, it's when you wonderful folks send me something and I really have no idea what to expect. So <laughs> I started doing that with my kids. And another reason is because I miss doing videos with my kids like that. Um, I think it was because I got nostalgic over a video that I saw that came out three or four years ago when they were a lot smaller and they grow so quick. So I kind of want, uh, wanted to start that. I'm not saying send me things. I'm just saying that's the reason why I did it. So from time to time, I'll be doing that with my kiddos. But big, huge, proper shout out to Sonny who sent me that uh, Detective Comics number 610, but also sent me this. So what is this? Now he knows I've been getting huge into Judge Dredd. 2000 ND reached out to me and sent me the case files, and we're gonna keep. I'm gonna keep doing that. I'm gonna be doing an overview of the case files and talking about my favorite ones. But what this man did was, t this is crazy. I've never seen anything like this. Is take the original magazines and put them in a chronological reading order, not in a publishing order but in a chronological reading order. Each page, and I know I'm flipping through here fast, but I just wanna show some of these uh, wonderful talents that are in here. Each page is inside of this plastic sleeve. That's crazy. Sonny, dude, I this is something I was completely blown away with. I've never seen anything like this. So he added the covers. Oh, dude, it's Judge Death. That's the man right there. Or the creature, whatever. Um, he added the covers, and then he added the progs in here. Oh, the, this is crazy. This things like this that just surprised me and blow me away. This is nuts. And he sent me six of these. He wrote little notes. He gave me these images to put on the spine. So they all connect together. This is what my daughter, uh, Alicia, was playing with. So you put one on each spine so unexpected and so cool they all come in this little slipcase folder oh, this one's upside down so yes they come with the covers to the original magazine completely unexpected and so much appreciated this is crazy this is what he does yes so he sends me the <laughs> how to read these in in the best reading order because he's a big dreadhead and i think he's trying to turn me into one i, I know craig my buddy craig is also a uh dreadhead but man this is completely s just badass that's so cool and he also um he also sent me the judge anderson case files and the restricted files too and he also sent me the restricted files as well. But this is just kind of a small taste of what he sent. Freaking thank you so much, dude. Was not expecting any of this. Some beautiful artwork, and it's an oversized format. So let me just give you... I know I, I, I got to keep going on about this, but um, let me give you an idea. So this is the size of the case files, as you can tell. And then this is the original way that they came out in this magazine format. So the artwork, of course, well... Other than being in full color. In the case files, they are in full color. But they are also oversized in the original format that they came in. So, that's freaking awesome, man. And now my buddy Alex. My buddy Alex, who's been watching the channel for a while. We've, and we've had some really deep philosophical conversations. Really good. All around. Great guy. I don't want... I don't know if he wants me <laughs> or not to reveal his... Uh, his YouTube handle, but um, he sent me a, a box of things, and it was just things that he was like, you know, I've read these, and I think you would appreciate them more, and I'll be honest, I've read just a few of the things that he sent me, because, well, a couple of them I couldn't find, so this here is Fearscape, and I think I read this years ago, and I never, I never finished it, I don't know why, so this was published by Volt publishing and that's who i was talking about uh that did the um the brandon sanderson book the dark one so this is what i'm used to i'm used to their trade paperback formats and then he sent me a series i've been dying to check out and this is by dan abnett uh 
Wild's End. This is First Light. There's only three volumes of this. And the artist is INJ Colbert. So this is a series that I've been wanting to check out. I'm a big fan of Dan Abnett. Of course, Andy Landing. Uh, Andy Landing. Andy Lanning on Candy Omar Talk Pretty One Day. But this is their material that were released over at Boom. And yes, Anthropomorphic Animals. And on top of that, Dan Abnett. Hell yes, I want to check it out. And it was a series I forgot about that I forgot to go and try to find. But he sent me all three trade paperbacks. Wasn't expecting this at all. But this is what the artwork looks like. So yes, it, this is probably some mature themes with anthropomorphic animals. Just because they're cute little fuzzy animals doesn't mean there's a deeper story in there think anybody that's read any of uh the duck comics or mouse or usagi on jembo can probably attest to that and also from boom studios is turncoat another series that he strongly suggested i had not read but he told me that i have to read it so digging this artwork though man that looks pretty badass Not sure what the story is. I'm sure if you watch my overviews, how different they are. Here, let's look at six from Sirius. This is by Doug Mensch and Paul Galachi. So, same guys that worked on the Deadly Hands of Kung Fu brought this particular book together. What is who published this? It doesn't even have a publisher. This looks old school, man. I better be careful handling this. It's epic comic, so this is Marvel. Okay. Uh, this is not the epic Marvel line, but it's epic comics. Like, that was the actual line that Marvel had. That uh, They released several books in that format, such as Akira. Now, um, yeah, what I was saying is I'm sure it's a lot different when I don't know what a book is about when I'm flipping through here. Because I'm just like, oh, that art looks cool. That girl is hot. That guy looks badass. Yeah. I, if I haven't read it, I can't, you know, talk about it. It's a lot different than my overviews. A lot of the time with my overviews, I've actually read the material. No, oh, the, the artwork by Galachi, man. I thought his black and white stuff was awesome. His This stuff looks great. This is one I haven't read. This is six from Sirius. My dude also sent me the Apocalypse War. So these are the essential Judge Shred. Uh, this one's in color. But this goes through all the classic Judge Shred stories in... Mag this is probably as close to the magazine's uh, format as you're going to get, but the size rather. But this particular one is the Apocalypse War, and it's just that particular saga that went through the different progs or the different collections. If you have the case files, this has already been collected in there, but this is an oversized format and all of it is in color. And it's just, if in case you want, think of like the Marvel uh, mo milestones, the X-Men milestones. When an event took place, they collect them in milestone format, and that's all you need if you just are interested in an event. Same thing with this. They take stories from the uh, restricted files and then the case files. All right, so here's some books that he sent me that completely surprised me. This is the Lone Sloan stuff and the stuff by Droulette. Now, I've read some of this, stuff like uh the six voyages of Lo sloan sloan <laughs> lone sloan what's up booty but there's a lot of this that i've not read like i haven't read gail yet and i've read the knight and i've read salamambo but i've not re read erm the mad or chaos or gail so let's take a look in here to show you what the type of art to expect in these are. These are translated by Titan Comics. They're big, oversized, beautiful. Look at that. I remember uh, reading these and, you know, the, the story can be a little confusing and convoluted. But who cares? You keep flipping the pages because of this. The amount of detail, the colors. Oh my god, this is beautiful. So it, it, I'm sure you can probably tell this is your sci-fi type of story. Let's look in here. But this is huge in Europe, and Titan has been doing an amazing job of bringing these over here. Some of them are out of print, but some of them are still available. But this is what the artwork looks like. Just look at that amount of detail. Freaking crazy. Um, I know I've, when I've done some hauls, I've, I've shown off the ones that I've had. And, yeah, I've not read these. Oh. Dude, thank you so much, Alex. This is so freaking cool. 
I didn't know you were gonna send me all of them, man. That's that's awesome. Think these are the type of books that I always think like, oh well, this has to be in everybody's collection. If you're a fan of the medium of graphic novels, of course. Just there's not a lot of comics that have this amount of detail or that much love going into each panel. And the fact that you don't hear enough people talk about Lone Sloan, you know, kind of makes me think maybe not a lot of people have read it. So I love bringing attention to books like this. Um, part of the reason why I enjoy doing this channel. And I know it, it's it's a mixed bag, right? It's like, well, crap, now I got to go spend... God bless, look at each brick, man! You got to love stuff like that. I don't care if you appreciate art. You just, you have to admit that's awesome. Each one of these bricks, he's sat there and drove. Anyway, what the hell was I? Um, yes, so it's a mix bag, the channel. You see a lot of cool things on here, but can't afford, right? And I'm not telling you everybody should go out and, and get things. I just, my, my job is to suggest things and to show what the artwork looks like for those people that are interested and can't afford it. Um, sometimes I can't help myself though when I'm looking at a book and I get really excited about especially if it's something I haven't seen before but shit like this this gets me excited god bless that is beautiful damn art print and it's found inside of this comic and I know I've shown this one but just in case you didn't see that particular video that probably came out three or four years ago when I was doing my hauls this is what the in all of these look like every one of these looks like this and of course I showed that one which has the least amount of details this page there we go look at that see a little more Kirby ish influence here in that face yeah I remember when I was reading this I, I had to I remember showing Melanie I'm like dude you gotta see this I know you don't give a crap about the story but just look and appreciate this for a minute Next up is Equinoxes by Pedrosa. Now here's a book that I have to read. He uh, told me all about it and how much it meant to him. And I'm just flipping through here. This is done by uh, Cyril Pedrosa. Um, and it was originally published in France. I didn't even know what this was. Like he was asking me, one day we were having a conversation, if I've ever read it. Because on my channel, I suggest things to him, and he's like, okay, I gotta read that, because Omar told me to read it. But I take a lot of suggestions from you all. And when, once he found out I had not even heard of this book, he's like, okay, I'm sending that your way, dude. Um, but it looks gorgeous, and the art style, I don't know if it's all done by Pedrosa, but I love that the different chapters have a different type of art style. It almost feels like an art book in a way, or a book about um, storyboards. It's the way it almost feels. See what I mean? That looks a lot different than the art in here. Very cool. Digging that. All of this is translated into English. And like I said, originally published in French. So it looks like a book that, for me, it's my type of taste, will turn out to be a page turner. Now, he also sent me a book that I love, but did not own, and that is Marada the She-Wolf. And of course, two of my favorite creators working together you have the phenomenal Chris Claremont and John Bolton. There's an introduction here by Mary Jo Duffy, who is the editor, Chris Claremont's editor, also a writer at Marvel Comics. And there's the Art of War. Oh my gosh, yes. I haven't read this. Well, it's been a while since I've read this. Why didn't I own this? You know what? Doesn't matter. Alex and I were supposed to talk and meet and talk about our favorite books. And that's why I didn't own this, because he was going to send it to me one day. Just look at that. Yes, it's all fantasy. It's all written by my favorite comic book writer of all time, and John Bolton, a phenomenal artist. Chris Claremont, writing a strong female lead. <sighs> Who would have thought of that? Damn. Kind of makes me wish that these two had worked on a Red Sonja book together. But this is what the artwork looks like. This one is published by, I think, it's Titan as well. Yeah, Titan uh, released this. Last but certainly not least, uh, some of y'all may remember if you watch all my hauls, um, when I bought a bunch of used Prince Valiants, or I had some store credit, and I used up the rest of my store credit, went back to the store, and got the rest of the Hal Foster Prince Valiant collections. So I'm still missing some. And I know there are box sets available, but I guess since I started buying them in this format, this is the way I'll keep buying them. 
So here we have more Prince Valiant with this beautiful Foster artwork. So uh, I know like when I've done my book tour, people have asked, where's your Prince Valiant? How do you not have that? I know, and then there are people are like, I can't believe you have all these books, but there are still people that are like, you're still missing this. And I love those people that are like, you're missing this. But even more so, I love the people that are like, you're missing this. And I reply back, but I have that. Look at timestamp number blah, blah, blah. Or I've read that. Or I've read it and I didn't like it. And I know sometimes people get upset with me for not liking the same things that they do. But hey, you know, it happens. I don't expect everybody to love Avengers The Crossing. Here, let's look at uh, another volume really quick. That was volume 15. Let's look at volume, let's look at an earlier one here, volume 11. But this is the type of stories to expect or the type of artwork. They're all the strips of Prince Valiant. And holy crap, when you look at the years, 1955, 56, this is from 57 through 58. Some beautiful stuff in here. And, and it, it's a huge book. I mean, to kind of give you an idea, here is the dark one. But these are huge, oversized books. These aren't going to fit into a Kalax. I think they're, if I'm not mistaken, I think they are. I knew they were wider, but this is how much longer they are than an absolute edition. But that, as they say, is that. Now, some of these books are available from our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off retail price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you Minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And that was it. That was my haul for the month of May. I know it's a little bit late, but hey, better late than never, right? Uh, this was The Uncanny Omar. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know what you picked up, if you remember what you picked up in May. And let me know what you're excited to pick up here in the month of June. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet, ring that bell for notifications. We are on Spreadshop and on Patreon, amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. And more importantly, as always, please stay healthy, stay safe out there, and much love. <laughs>